Hey guys, it's Vadim with Max Tech, and welcome to another video. Right here in front of me, I have two M1 iPad Pros, both running on iPadOS beta software, as you can see, and we have two keyboard cases. This is, of course, Apple's Magic keyboard case in the new really nice white finish, which I love, and this costs $350. That is a lot of money for a lot of people, so because of that, we have a new budget option. This is Bridges Pro Max Plus, I think, for $250. So you save $100 by going with this option, and there are a ton of changes this year, and I'm very happy to see them. So before we get into actually comparing how it all works, I wanna take these iPads off. As you guys can see on the new bridge, we finally have a MacBook style hinge just like that, which is super nice because previously with the Bridge Pro Plus on the 11 inch that we reviewed, you actually had to slide the iPad into the hinges, which was a little bit tough and annoying. And on top of that, because of that, you couldn't use a screen protector at all because there was just such a tight clearance. So now we have a new design just like that and it works magnetically. As you just saw, I'll just give you an example just snaps on just like that, very quick and easy, so I'm so happy that Bridge went with this new design. So just like a MacBook, you go up all the way, down all the way, compared to the Magic Keyboard case where you have this really interesting hinge that it's kind of like a dual hinge, just pops up like this and then snaps into place. And I absolutely love this hinge because the iPad Pro floats. You can see the bottom here is not attached. Now what's interesting this year is that the bridge is actually heavier. This is 2.1 pounds, just the keyboard case itself compared to 1.6 on the Magic Keyboard case. Now what's interesting about that is because of the higher weight on the bridge, you would expect it to do a little bit better in terms of the, I guess, balance between the iPad itself and the keyboard, but the bridge is actually more top heavy. Check this out. You lift it up slightly, it's already tipping over. Compared to this, watch this. Magic Keyboard case is less top heavy. You can bring it all the way up here, it still falls down, so it's gonna have less of a chance to fall over, and that's because of this floating design where the weight is kind of dispersed better. And now comparing the full setup, I can definitely feel a ton of extra weight with the bridge. 3.6 pounds compared to 3.1. This is like way heavier than a MacBook Pro. Like, it would be a pain to carry this around. I know it's not that big of a difference, half a pound, but still, you could feel this over time. And one thing I am noticing is that the bridge is quite a bit thicker. Like this whole extra back plate piece overhangs over the Magic Keyboard case. So that's another thing that's a little bit more bulky on the bridge. And one thing that I just noticed on the bridge is that there's no longer a notch to help you open it up. So in that case, you'll have to stick it on the hinge and then kind of pull the keyboard down which is the way that we open the Magic Keyboard case because it also does not have a notch. And one thing I am noticing on the Magic Keyboard case is that it's a little bit more grippy because like the whole case is like a rubbery material compared to the bridge, which kind of does move around easier. And that's because on the bottom, there's just these four pads and that's it. So it's not as grippy. And on top of that, if you are gonna be using your iPad like this and kind of tapping on it, you can see that it has a little bit of wobble, but watch what happens when you go to the bridge. So it's a little bit annoying if you're gonna be tapping. And one thing I really like about the bridge is that you get a more fine-tuned hinge angle. So you can go all the way from here, all the way back, just like that. And that's one of the things that people complained about with the Magic Keyboard case because it literally only goes up to here. So sometimes you may wanna go further, but you can't, which is annoying with the Magic Keyboard case. So I think that's some extra points for the bridge. Guys, look at this. Bridge, you did a killer job. Look at that, that's all you gotta do. So this actually gets close to the experience as just lifting this up. Look at that, just take it off, no issues at all. Now before we get into comparing the keyboards and the trackpads, I do wanna mention the ports. Both of these have a USB-C port on the side right here for the bridge and built into the hinge for the Magic Keyboard case. Now, the one in the bridge actually charges the built-in battery because yes, it does use Bluetooth, but with the Magic Keyboard case, it is a live hardwired connection and it uses the smart connector, 
Right here, you can see on the Magic Keyboard case, you have these three pins and it matches up to the same three pins magnetically. So there are no batteries on the Magic Keyboard case. And that is also why the keyboard section is so much thinner. This is like literally twice as thin as the bottom portion of the bridge. And if you're wondering why the Magic Keyboard case has that USB-C port even though there are no batteries, well that's because this supports pass-through charging. So you plug it in into the hinge and through those three little pins, it's gonna charge up your iPad Pro. That is probably one of the best features of the Magic Keyboard case. So if you're plugging it into the bridge, it's literally just charging the built-in battery just for the keyboard case. And because of the hardwired connection, it works instantly. There is no setup. You literally put it on there, works just like that compared to the bridge, which you do have to do some setup. So let's go ahead and pair it. Let's go into the Bluetooth. Let's turn it on, pair it just like that. Request to pair. There you go, it is connected and everything should start working. But the downside with buying a third party keyboard case compared to Apple's own Magic Keyboard is that you have to download the firmware yourself. Yep, there you go, update. We have a new version of firmware, so let's go ahead and connect your bridge keyboard to power. Serious? Okay, we have to grab the power cable, hold on. Oh, never mind, it is running the latest firmware. I guess we're fine. Let's go ahead and move on to the keyboard comparison before we get into the track pads. Hey guys, this is actually pretty nice. Yeah, this, this feels like a really nice keyboard. Like, I love the tactile feedback. That's really responsive, I've gotta say that. Bluetooth 5.0 is doing wonders because wow, that is responsive. Okay, this is super responsive, but these keys just don't have as much travel. Wow, I like this keyboard. Yeah, the bridge, the keys themselves, better on the bridge. However, one thing that annoys me with the bridge is that these keys are pretty small. Like, look how small they are. Look at all these big gaps compared to the Magic Keyboard case. You have basically full-size keys. But one of the biggest complaints with the Magic Keyboard case is that you do not have a top row of function keys. I really wish Apple added that, but they did not. So right here, you can see you have basically an escape key. Look at that, brings you back to home. You have a lock key, just like that. I think you should be able to, look at that, spacebar. That's their new um, instant start or something like that. You have, what is this? Oh, look at that, keyboard backlighting. You have three settings. However, on the Magic Keyboard case, you don't have that key but it all works automatically. And now that we have the lights off, you guys should be able to see those differences in the backlighting. You have off, low, medium, high. So there you go, backlighting works pretty well. Now on the Magic Keyboard case, it obviously does not have a key for that. It uses the ambient sensor connected through the smart connector, so it lights up itself when it knows you're in a dark room. But anyway, getting back to the keyboard case, we have this key right here that brings up the on-screen keyboard if you ever need to. You also have the global key. This is the language change key if you have multiple languages, which is nice. You have your media keys, pause, play, volume up and down. You have your Bluetooth and your power button. And now let's finally get into the most important thing, which is the trackpad. And as you can see, this trackpad is massive, absolutely huge compared to this tiny little Magic Keyboard case trackpad. Check out this difference from that top camera. That is insanity. That must be like, I don't know, close to three times the surface area, two and a half times. That's insane. And what I absolutely love about the trackpad on the Magic Keyboard case is that you have an even clicking feel all the way around, even up to these corners, which is unique to MacBooks. They are basically the best trackpads out there, and Apple actually used a new patented technology to make this happen. Compared to, on a lot of the third-party cases, including this bridge, you have a diving board design. So up here at the top, it's incredibly hard to click, and as you get lower, easy, very easy. So it's kind of inconsistent because it's attached here at the top. It's really hard to click. In the center, it's actually pretty decent, but I definitely prefer the Magic Keyboard trackpad for that. And now let's get into the trackpad gestures, and that was the number one reason why we told you not to buy the Bridge Pro Plus, because it didn't support Apple's gestures and it was just a total mess. So now let's get into the new Bridge Keyboard's gestures and the Magic Keyboard cases. Now I do wanna admit something. We shot a lot of video comparing these two and we were having massive issues 
with the bridge keyboard case. It was super glitchy, it was unresponsive, it was freezing up the iPad. So what we've done is we actually reverted this silver iPad to iPadOS 14.6. It's no longer on the iPadOS 15 beta, while this one still is. And I do want to mention that we did try out the assistive touch accessibility settings, which is recommended for this bridge keyboard case, and we still had these massive issues. So what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to swap these, put this one over here. So as you can see right there, we have iPadOS 15 right here for the Magic Keyboard case and 14.6 on the bridge. And just to show you guys, with the beta of iPadOS 15, the Magic Keyboard case, it works perfectly. No issues at all. So that's kind of nice that you can download the beta if you want to with the Magic Keyboard case. It's very reliable. You're never going to have any issues with firmware updates or anything like that. And now back on this one right here, let's go ahead and find the Bluetooth settings and connect it. And now let's see if those gestures are working well. Let's go ahead and do a three finger swipe to home. There you go. Three fingers and stop. There you go. Look at that for the app switcher. Let me show you real quick. Swiping left and right on the Magic Keyboard case happens perfectly. Swiping up, app switcher, scrolling is perfect. Let me go to a web page. Perfect scrolling, super smooth. You can scroll slowly. You can go very quickly. Perfect experience with the Magic Keyboard case. Never any issues. And let's try the bridge. All right, scrolling's pretty smooth. Let's go ahead and try some scrolling here. Still works pretty quickly. It is slightly glitchy. Sometimes it happens faster than you want it to, like you're trying to go slower. Still a lot better than what we had with iPadOS 15. Bridge now supports pinch to zoom, so let's go ahead and try it. Hey, working fairly reliably. Oh. It's glitching up there. All right, so it's not a perfect experience. Yeah, it's not letting me pinch out, come on. All right, let me show you on the uh, Magic Keyboard case. Here we go. All right, pinching. Nice and smooth, like I can tell that the FPS while zooming in is much nicer. Look at that, look at that responsiveness. <laughs> All right, let's try it here. Okay, it's not letting me zoom out. I can't zoom out for some reason. Let me go back, let's try it again. Yeah, look at that, there's like drop frames. So, pinch to zoom doesn't work as well. Swiping left and right works pretty decently. Oh, there's some lag there. Look at that. Whoa, okay. What happened there? <laughs> okay, well, while it's doing that, let me just go back here and look at that. That is reliable, super smooth. We're not getting those lag issues. Wow, that's fast. So now with all of that set and compared, let's finish off with the original question. Is it worth saving that $100 and going with the bridge or should you just spend the extra money, 350 bucks, which is very expensive, and just go straight for the Magic Keyboard case? Well, as you guys saw in this video, the bridge is more bulky, it's quite a bit more heavy, the hinge design is definitely nice, and the top row of function keys is nice, but the trackpad experience is not as good because you have the diving board design. Even though it's a larger trackpad, the one on the Magic Keyboard case is just amazing. And on top of that, with the gestures, it's perfect on the Magic Keyboard case, even if you're upgrading to iPadOS 15 beta or whatever, it just works perfectly because it's hardwired compared to the bridge where you could have one firmware version that messes things up or you have to wait for an update to get things fixed. But overall, the gestures were working pretty well, but definitely not perfect. Like the pinch to zoom was glitching out and the swiping between apps was having some weird glitch issue. Whereas you have none of that, no worry at all with the Magic Keyboard case. And of course you have the uh, pass through charging, which is nice leaving the original port for you to use for other things. So overall guys, I'd say comparing everything that we saw here, I think it's worth spending the extra 100 because you're getting a very reliable experience. The premium design, it's just gonna work for years and years compared to this where you might have Bluetooth issues, the battery's gonna die on you, different stuff like that. You don't have to deal with any of that with the Magic Keyboard. So with that said, I've gotta say good job Bridge because this is a huge improvement compared to what we experienced last year. The gestures and everything works a lot better. But overall, if you do want to save $100, definitely go for it. And you get that extra top row function keys, you get the extra display angles. But for me, I think 
the Magic Keyboard all the way. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video, and if you did, go ahead and click the circle above to subscribe. Definitely check out one of those two videos right there. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.